Hi and welcome back to another video. We are today at the G-Skill booth. I will pretty much spend my entire day here. We will do some overclocking at the stage. And if everything works out, we will have a 4090 matrix here without cooler. So I will actually be able to show the PCB if everything works out. So I will just hop on stage and see what I can grab. So here we have the 4090 matrix. And what is kind of entertaining is, I mean, this is an early sample. It's one of the first test samples Asus had. But if you pay attention to the label, it even says Strix. And if I just look at the PCB, the entire layout, it looks like a Strix to me. Like I cannot tell any kind of difference. I tried to figure out if like, I don't know, inductors, VRM, MOSFET, something is different, but all looks kind of the same to me. What is for sure is that the GPUs are binned. So it could be that they're kind of binning Strixes and then turn them into matrix cards. I'm not sure about that, but from what I can see right now, there is no big difference from the matrix to the streaks, at least when it comes to the PCB. It just seems completely the same. The major difference will probably be the cooler in the end and the BIOS that has a higher stock TDP. Obviously, I mean, this card is fully prepared already for liquid nitrogen overclocking. That's why yeah, it's a bit of a thermal paste mess that's also done to insulate this area slightly and you can see there's Vaseline all over the car, also to insulate it from condensation. That's why this card looks like that, but yeah, that's the matrix right there. Or should I call it the Strix matrix? Not quite sure. So right now the card is getting a new treatment of thermal paste. It's the same card that I just showed you right now. And you might be familiar with the thermal paste cracking, so that means that the thermal paste comes loose from the surface, from the silicon in this case. That's why the, yeah, the thermal paste preparation is pretty crucial. We're using a special batch actually of the cryonaut that's very well for low temperatures. And Sunho is giving the card the final touch, as you can see. So we, we are using a lot of thermal paste, which is usually also necessary. Because um, yeah, if you even just miss the edges, then you will straight have those cracking problems or also issues because of like condensation that can occur on the SMDs on the side. So everything will be covered in paste. And then the card will go onto the container. And then we will see how good this card can perform. So here we have a special version of the Elmore heater that is fitted on the memory because you might be familiar with that as well, that you want to have the GPU as cold as possible. But if the memory gets too cold, you usually lose memory clock. That's why this additional PCB is sitting on the memory itself. So we're cooling the GPU with liquid nitrogen and at the same time we will have current flow through the PCB. So it will have those four zones right here directly on the memory to heat the memory part while we are cooling down the GPU to make sure we can achieve both high memory clock and high GPU clock. Now the card goes on top here. And same thing for the back. So we have a thick thermal pad right here. And on top of this thermal pad, we will have another Elmore heater, another PCB that will heat the card from the backside. And even though this might sound counterproductive because it's kind of also heating the back of the GPU area, this is still necessary to avoid like a lot of condensation building up and also avoid like um, problems with memory clocks. There is a magic software you probably have not seen before. It's called the Boost Master. And yeah, this yeah. can exceed voltages that you usually cannot access or like bypass. So you might know from like MSI Afterburner or GPU Tweak, you can raise the voltage on uh, GTX like 30 and 40 cards, but only to a like small percentage or small degree. And with this Boost Master, it's like an Asus internal tool. We will have to see if we can somehow maybe leak that, but yeah. I saw that you can go up to like plus 600 millivolts, so that's like 1.6 volt on the GPU, which is pretty insane and would also result in a quite high power consumption. So we're trying to go in the direction of like minus 140, minus 150 degrees Celsius, 
And uh, Suno is doing his magic right now with all the tools like the Thermospy. Thermospy is actually quite well known, but uh, Boostmaster is something different and he's now setting a GPU offset clock. As you can see, it's already 3750 megahertz. Oh yeah, that's the limit. So here we have another matrix and this time as you can see it's not like fully covered in Vaseline or anything and we could even talk to another um, guy from ASUS who gave us a lot of explanations about uh, what actually is different on the matrix versus the Strix because first look I couldn't really spot a difference but he told me that they have new temperature sensors in these areas so like one on here, one on here, one on here, and also in uh, the power stage area, which will allow in the ASUS software to get like a temperature map of each area and to see what kind of temperature you will have on the components. So let's say you want to figure out if your like right side of the memory might have like no contact to the thermal pads or whatever, or um, if it's like getting warmer and then the other side, you can check that, which is actually quite helpful. It would be perfect if you would like put a custom water cooler on it, which is something I think you wouldn't do on the Matrix because it comes with the AIO. But just as, as a technical feature, that is uh, pretty nice to have. I also checked and the power stages are different than to the Strix. They are now MPS power stages and previous to that they were on semi. But I also checked the data sheet and at least according to the data sheet, it's the same rating. So they're both rated at 70 amps and also efficiency. It's like 1% difference to before, so it's like not really worth talking about could be that it's just changed for like availability reasons or something so that's like nothing really to talk about what's to talk about though are the inductors so the inductors are different from the original 4090 Strix you might remember that I complained a little bit about it that I was not happy about the coil wine and those are different inductors and they should have significantly less coil wine I also want to point out that ASUS also now uses them or has been using already on the 4090 Strix so they changed them in production so also if you would get a normal Strix now, they would have the different inductors for less coil wine. So we actually changed something with our video and that's something I'm really happy about. And I did not have the time yet to, te to test it, obviously, because we didn't have like a, a working retail unit with uh, the AIO on it to check for coil wine. But I'm really happy to see that there is improvement in here. At G-School there are also some pretty nice mods. So we have this Singularity PC right here, which I find like personally that hits my taste. And also this one, I mean, it's not something entirely new, it has been done before. It's basically a, a monitor and they removed the backside. And instead of having like an LED panel in the back, you just use the light from the PC. So it's basically a monitor as a side panel but it still looks amazing. It just always requires to have like a full white build and a lot of light inside, but I wonder if this will ever like be a mass market thing because honestly, I really like it. Even though I think this one is not made by a German, it's probably the most German yeah, mod you could have because you can actually, you have a tap for beer. There is also this system made by Elmore and I actually waited for the show to be almost over. As you can see, it's uh, pretty empty. It's uh, close to closing. All the other systems are already shut off and they're just heating up this one because if you just stop by during the day, you cannot see anything. You just see the smoke coming out from the top. There is like a LN2 injection into the LN2 container that's running all day long and this way maintaining the temperature. You can also see some heaters into the container, so it's kind of regulating the temperature to always stay at a certain point automatically. And due to the fact that you pump nitrogen all the time into this container, it also eliminates condensation because if there's just nitrogen, you don't have normal air that contains water. So I hope we can open it now, open it now and take a look inside. It's definitely a very interesting concept. As you can see, this is like daily running 10,000 mega transfers and 7 gigahertz. And here we see that that's where the liquid nitrogen comes from and it's directly injected into the container. And we have some like cartridge heaters on the side, which are usually used for 3D printers to have some heat if required. So yeah, very impressive system. And now that all the systems are like shut down and I also feel like I have to shut down yeah, it has been a long day here at G-Skill. Absolutely enjoyed it and I hope you also enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.